The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 27th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Slightly mixed bag out there. We take a look at the U.S. indices. The semi is just slightly positive. Less than one point to the upside. Dow's off 73, quarter of a percent. S&P down nine, two tenths. NASDAQ is flat, it's off three points. Russell's down seven. That's a four tenth of a percent move. The largest move to the downside of the trannies off one to three tenths percent, 196 points there. You've got gold trading up five. 60. Silver's up 34 pennies. That's a buck, uh, one, one and four tenths percent move to the upside. Lights we crude off a quarter. Natural gas down eight pennies. 30 year treasury up 22 ticks. Print out at 115.17. The leader in the clubhouse to so the upside is Mercado Libre up 37 bucks, two and a half percent. Domino's Pizza, $11, three percent move there. Super Micro Computer up nearly 10. Three and a half percent. Lamb Research up nine, a little over one percent. Roku is up six dollars and change. That's a seven percent move there. To the downside, we've got MicroStrategy, nearly twelve bucks, two and a quarter percent. John Deere down eight bucks, two and a quarter percent. Eli Lilly down six bucks, a little over one percent. Al B. Morrow off six bucks. That's nearly a five percent move. And Old Dominion, Old Dominion Freight Line down five, nearly six dollars. It's about one and four tenths percent move to the downside. Let's begin our day by taking a look at the daily and the uh, weekly equity future contracts. Let's move over. We'll move over to our white background screens out there. We're going to see what we're going to see here on the daily base. That's the upper row of charts out there. You'll see in the ES mini, let me just, you'll see a TD9 cow bottom, wave number seven bottom back on October the uh, 27th. And now where are we at? Well, we've got now a TD9 cow top that completed on Friday. We also have a bearish structure daily profile that is attempting to form as we speak. Now, the bearish structured area or the range is between 4572. That's a clear resistance level. And I've got two centers, one on my white background charts. And that's at 4541. One on the black background charts, and that's at 45.56. Right now, I'm going to use 45.56. And if price closes below that, well, that would uh, signal to you and I that price should get back to that green oscillator and change line. Now, regardless of the profile, that's what price should do when you create a TD9 count pattern. In this case here, it's a TD9 count top. Price should pull back and test that oscillator and change line. Now, a green oscillator and change line is bullish, whereas a red one is bearish. A green one tells us the price oscillator is above zero and that it's rising above zero. Those are bullish conditions. In other words, we have bullish conditions as we speak right now inside the ES Mini. That doesn't mean price won't pull back out there. In fact, it should. However, if price closes above the high of uh, two days ago, of Thursday, that is, uh, 45.80.50, and negates that pattern, which suggests that we move higher. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ 
Uh, went ahead and formed a TD9 count top. Bar number eight is the high. Today's going to be the completion of that pattern. Doesn't really matter where price closes today or where price trades to. Here, what we can see, price did form a new profile three days ago. Support is down at 15,748, resistance 16,102. What price should do here is pull back and test the oscillator and change line. That's going to be at about the center area. That's about 15,890. If price just pulls back and tests that level, rejects it, stays above it, Conditions will then be neutral for both the ES and the NQ. Why neutral? Because you'll have a top and price pulled back and successfully tested a key level of support that held that green oscillator and change line even more important than the bottom of a profile. If we take a look at the Dow equity future contract on Friday, it completed its TD9 count pattern. Now, a close above Friday's high, that would be 35,410, would negate that signal. There is no new profile here. What price should do is move down towards that oscillator and change line, 34,968. Remember that oscillator and change line, oh, you will as I like to refer to it as, is going to change as price moves up and down. So the figures that I'm giving you are really guidelines. They're good guidelines, but they are just simply that, guidelines. So price should pull back towards that 34,698 level. We take a look at the Russell 2000. We don't have any kind of a uh, top out here. What we do have is prices run into trend line resistance. And for that, let me just see if I can uh, put in one of the larger trend lines. I mean, there's a couple of different ones, but if we just simply uh, start all the way back here. There we go. So if we just simply start at its high, give me a second here. Let's draw a line, grab the line feature. So we're going to say here is our here is the primary trend line. Out here, we've got other trend lines as well. I can put one in from this swing point right here. Down to there, there's another trend line. So we've got trend line resistance in essence. I could even draw another one. We could use this swing point right here to draw a, a trend line. So you can see that what we have out here is basically a bunch of trend line resistance. And can that be a top? The answer to that question is yes. So we've got absolute topping patterns or signals, I should say, patterns really inside the ES, the NQ, and the YM for their daily time frame. We look at the weekly charts out here. It's the NQ that would give us pause. The reason the NQ would give us pause is because what price has done. So in each of these, we've got girly buy patterns. Those formed weeks ago. But in the case of the NQ, what price was able to do today, um, I'm sorry, last week, was get up and test resistance. That was the top of its profile. And that's at the 16,130 level. Now, just test the level of resistance, does that mean it's a top? No, but you're at a topping point on the weekly chart. You've got a topping signal on the daily time frame chart. Odds favor, we've got some type of a top out there. But what we're going to do is we'll spend time trying to figure out what kind of top that is. And we'll do that uh, really by taking a look at one of Nancy's questions. So let's do that right now, and then we'll later get to Microsoft for you, Nancy. But let's try to answer her questions with regard to TD9 count patterns. Now, what I'm going to put up on my screen right now, this is a market analyzer. Subscribers get these on the uh, daily and the end-of-day reports out there. They're always slightly different, but this one here we're taking a look at, this shows you on the left-hand side, that column shows you the cash indices, the index ETFs, the S&P 500 sectors, the Magnificent Seven, John C. and the Tiger's Den asked about those, and the equity future contracts out there. When you take a look at the daily TD9 count, that is column number uh, uh, four out here, you'll see lots of nines and stars. If it's got a star, it's a TD9 count top that's in place. When we come back to this break, we'll talk about those in just a few. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So we're taking one of Stevie's market analyzers, take a look at a number of different instruments, all of the or most of the uh, indices, U.S. Uh, cash indices that we track, the equity future contracts, the index ETFs, including the equal weighted, which is important to have out there. Uh, those equal weighted for the uh, S&P is RSP. That's a symbol for the uh, uh, NASDAQ 100, the Qs, it's QQEW. So we like to make sure that we're paying attention to both. Those would give us uh, confirming signals on the sectors inside the S&P 500, the Magnificent 7. So those that show a star next to the number under the daily says D-TD9, column number four from the left. Whether it's got a uh, one, because it could be the bar following bar number one. That we're, now, all of these are as of Friday's close out there. So those are all the signals, and you can see all the different tops. Now, not every single uh, indice has a top. You'll see a number eight here for the Dow Transports. When the Dow Transports are trading lower this morning, they're down about um, – one and two tenths percent right now, 181. So we know there's no TD9 count top, at least at this stage of the game. Um, that's in place out there, no star. But you can see a number of different TD9 count patterns that are in place out here, um, which is a pretty decent indication that we should see a short-term top. Now, the question becomes, is that short-term top just pulling back to test support and then we move higher? Well, why would we move higher if this is just a test of support, Steve-O? Now, that's a good question, too. And the reason for that would be because of two different reasons out here. And the first reason is this is the 126-year seasonal cycle. Just plain. Now, what I've done is I put my detrending tool on there. It just makes it a little bit easier. I'll take it off. Okay, so you've got that view. Oh, shoot. I got to keep it off of the screen. I don't know why that screen creates a problem for that tool. That's okay. Stevie's got backup plans. So just give me a moment. We'll switch over to that. Because we don't want to lose that screen. If we lose that screen, that could create problems for Stevie. And we don't want that during the show. If it happens after the show, no big deal. So now we're back to um, this chart here, which, again, is showing us the 126-year seasonal cycle. But I'll put on the detrending tool out here. It gives us a little bit better view as to what to anticipate or expect. So we know that the market should be trading, in essence, somewhat sideways. We're not trading sideways. We've got TD9 count tops. But this shows us that typically – Within the next few days, by the end of this week out here, uh, November 30th, today's the 27th, uh, that we should see then market moving higher. 
Now we're in window dressing time period. All that sort of makes sense. Then we get a pullback after the first week of December. And then finally, you know, this is a seasonal. This is the 126-year seasonal cycle out there. If we go ahead and we just turn this over to, give me a moment. Sorry about that. We just simply go ahead and take a look at pre-election years. So all those will populate right now. And again, I've got the detrending tool on. What you'll see here is we're also in a favorable time period out there. So it's very possible that what we're going to get if we go back to these TD9 counts, we'll change the screens out here just so that you can grab them so that you understand where we're at with regard to the TD9 counts out there. Um, so here we're back at this screen. What we may just simply be seeing is nothing more than a two-day pullback. So let's go take a look at that. For that, we're just simply going to switch down. And Nancy, I'm going to get to your question. It just is um, – your question is basically when they get a grouping like that, uh, what's the signal that they're going to move higher? Well, that's actually pretty easy. The signal is price takes out that resistance level and closes above that. But in the meantime, what might be going on here? So what might be going on is if we take a look at the NQ. Now, this is the daily dance steps, right? You and I have taken a look at this. So what we know is that in bull moves, what we would typically see is a two to three bar knee jerk reaction low. And if we take a look at the red numbers, red digits on this chart that you and I are looking at, those represent consecutive lower closes, one after another. And the black digits are consecutive higher closes out there. You can see that coming off the low from October the 26th out there, we have not had a two-day normal, two-day knee-jerk reaction pullback and low out there. And that tells us we've got a real strong market. Now, you didn't need me or this chart to tell you that, but we are all visual, not all of us, but many of us are more visual. And so when we take a look at something, it kind of puts things in perspective. So wouldn't be surprised to see a lower close today inside the NQ. And if we do, maybe all we're going to get is just a two to three bar pullback out there. Remember, we do have new profile levels and inside the NQ, it's not shown on this chart here, but inside the NQ, certainly the numbers that you can use for resistance and support, what's in question, now it's only the ES that I believe is in question in the center of the box, but the top of the profile or resistance is 16102. But Nancy, in order for the NQ What's the term Basil uses out there? Um, I don't remember right now. But in order for the NQ to resuscitate itself, to negate that signal and tell us that we're moving higher, the TD9 count signal, that is, you're not seeing this on this chart, Nancy, you need a price close above 16,17350. Residual strength, yeah, that sounds good. 16,153. I don't think that was the word that I was looking at, but we're headed down the right path out there. Um, but 16,17350 is where price must close above in order to suggest to you and I that there is a uh, that there is a uh, um, uh, that's going to negate that uh, signal out there. That's one way to take a look at it, um, and we'll take a look at another way to look at it, uh, and we'll do that when we, when we really go back and take a look at the magnificent seven for John out there. Here, what we've got are the intraday time periods for the NQ. In the case of the NQ out here, all that we've really got is a two-hour TD nine count bottom pattern. That's the primary pattern. 30 minute has a TD9 count bottom as well. What you don't see out here is any kind of a topping signal. Now, you could get a sell the D point pattern on the 30 minute time frame chart. Absolutely. You could get that in the next six minutes out there. That would suggest price pulling back to test support, the oscillator and change line at 16,006. And below that, 15,970 would be the move out there. So, um, and we've just had a narrow range body today, uh, at least thus far, into the uh, trading cycle out there. Um, the, to the upside, would I be paying attention to? If the markets are really going to rally, Nancy, what we should see is that TD9 count bottom on the two-hour time frame chart take out resistance. And here the resistance level is not just the top of the profile, which so far has acted as resistance, 16.042, but instead take out 16.071.50. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. So 16.071.50 would be an important level to watch to the upside inside of the NQ. So we've got that cluster that we took a look at, a so-called cluster cluster of indices of index ETFs, including the equal weight out there. So is end, but but there still is that possibility. It's just a possibility of just a two day pullback. If it is a top, we should see the underlying instruments. Let me see if I can. Let me do this. Let me close this out. I think I have the uh, NASDAQ, the top NASDAQ stocks out. Give me a moment here. Mm. 
way we put those. Okay, so now we're going to change screens out here. Now, I hope that the screen that I show you is still showing up real white. It's uh, I've I'm, I'm got a failed monitor out there I'm going to have to address over the next couple of days. It's still showing up, and I think uh, your view, it still shows is pretty white. You don't see the difference. But here are the uh, top eight instruments that make up over 50% of the weighting inside of the NDX100. If you take a look at Apple right now, the upper left-hand side, Apple does not have a topping pattern. And all that's taken place so far today is a pullback in testing and rejecting of that green oscillator and change line. In order for Apple to tell us it's got a change in trend, we need to see a close below the bottom of its profile. That's at 188.29. In the case of Microsoft out here, Microsoft does not have a top in place. In order to get a TD9 count top today or tomorrow, we need to see a spike above 379.79. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. When we come back to this break, we'll finish take a look at the uh, the uh, the Magnificent 7. We'll take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the Advanced Client Oscillator, Boeing, and SoFi. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, up, folks. I switched over to the Netflix chart just simply to uh, really answer Nancy's question out here about the TD9 counter. The question specifically is when they, when they, uh, when can they regroup? 
when can they regroup like we've got and uh, simply go higher? And so for that, each one, uh, Nancy, or whatever instrument is you're taking a look at, here's Netflix as an example. Netflix forms a TD9 count top. It does in the bar following bar number nine, the actual trading day that it does. So you're going to take a look at Stevie's tools out here. Confirms that TD9 count top on November 13th. So the very first thing that we know out here, Nancy, is that first on that day, that was telling us that price should pull back to test that green oscillator and change line. Now, in this case here, it was green. We don't know whether it's green or red, but in this case here, it's green. We already know green oscillator and change line is a bullish signal. When price is above it, it's very bullish out there. Price never even pulled back to test that. In fact, the next day, the pattern was negated with a close above that high. That told us about a strong upward momentum move. So strong that now what we've got inside of Netflix is it's going to go ahead and complete a TD nine count top today. Bar number eight is the high of the pattern thus far. What should take place is price should pull back and at least test that oscillator and change line. 47130. We don't have any new profiles or anything inside of a Netflix as we speak right now. Um, you just simply have to watch price behavior. I don't know what price is going to do, but what we do know is what price should do and does it do that? Uh, does it pull back and test and reject that level? If it does, you would certainly stay long with regard to Netflix for its daily time frame. And if price closed below that, short of any new profiles forming, the next downside target so that people can do a risk reward decision would be its breakout level. And that's down at 442.60. So I hope that answers your question with regard to the TD9 counts. Um, if not, just keep writing me questions and we will uh, get back to those as soon as we can. But we do have call ahead seating here. So as opposed to going back to the other Magnificent Seven, we're going to go right to that uh, uh, call. And that is from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? And happy Thanksgiving or, or post Thanksgiving. Thank you, Steve. Same to you. And good morning to you. And, yeah, everything's well. How about you? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, now i got to get rid of all that pie that I ate. <laughs> my, my take you it. have a pie, took, pie Oh, yeah. Only took, like, uh, you know, half an hour to take that all in and put it on and just strap it to the sides of my body. And it's going to take two weeks to take it off, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But you want to take a look at AMBA, I believe, is a ticker symbol you're calling about. And if so, uh, tell tell us what you're doing and how I can best help you. Yeah, let me just go through really quickly just what I've been doing. I've been trying to do uh, some different earnings plays, but I, what I okay. do is I don't buy anything until the earnings have come out, the news is out, and then uh, and it can be something that – has their earnings before the market opens. It can be something that comes out in the afternoon. It doesn't much matter. I just okay. like to have the numbers come out so I can look at them. And I used to try on occasion doing trades before they came out, and I just found it's better to just wait. And uh, sometimes you miss them. They just take off on you. You can't do anything. But other times it works out. And so, um, and so are you playing just, kind of a momentum type of a play? Um, is that the thought process or – yeah, well, there's a pretty good example. The other day I did Zoom video. Okay. They came out with their numbers, and I want to say that one was after the market closed. Um, but it was definitely before the market opened. And so I went ahead, and the numbers came out. They beat on earnings revenue, but then the stock actually dropped, which is that's even more ideal. And, and the other, I guess, component that's pretty important to what I'm doing is I'm looking for stocks that are at the lower end of their range instead of being near their tops when I'm doing it. Okay. Because I'm trying to do calls on what I'm doing. So um, in this case, it was already near its lower end, and it came out with good numbers, but it dropped. And so when it made that drop, I just bought in, and, and I had, you know, ended up doing really well. I mean, probably within a short period of time, certainly that morning, I was able to already get out and on yeah, Zoom. Nice gain. And so that's what I'm looking for. And so now I'm looking at kind of going now to this last weekend. Yeah. I was looking for stuff that's going to be this week. And Amberell is one of them. And I also have Marvell as another one. So okay. that's what All I'm right. going so, to look at. Yeah. Amberell. So we'll take a look at Right. We'll take a look at both. And thanks for that explanation. And here we take a look at the Zoom charts. I want to go back to that so people can see what actually took place here. I'm, I'm going to guess that the earnings date was on November 21st. I don't know whether it was before the bell, after the bell, or so forth. But what happened on that day is price did pull back, and what it was testing was profile support. And that was at 62.76. Granted, it got down below that. It got all the way down to 61.83. But what price was doing on that day, folks, was just simply pulling back, testing support, 
And that, in essence, using support as a, a level to get in. So that was on Zoom. Uh, but Brent wants to take a look at Ambrilla, A-M-B-A. So we're going to go ahead and refire up those charts out there. And they co come out with earnings sometime this week? Yeah, I believe the, both of them are going to be on Thursday, either Wednesday after the market closes or Thursday. I, I can't remember now, but I have it marked down. But and my, I guess my main question is what I'm looking for from you, if you can do it, is just – if it were to take a dip like, say, Zoom, just like you were talking about there, what, yeah. what would be some levels to be watching for? So the first level, so this did form a TD9 count top two days ago. So we've got a TD9 count top in place. So what should take place out here, much like I uh, was spent time talking about uh, with uh, – for Nancy, with regard to TD9 counts, is price should pull back to that oscillator and change line. So the first level that you would be watching or observing, Brent, is around the 5227 level. Again, that price is going to change up and down, so don't use it right to the penny. But that would be the first level of support. Turns out that just below that is the top of its daily profile. So short of some kind of new profile forming between now and when the earnings are released, the second area of support you'd be looking at is 5104. If this were to take a real deep dive, well, that would mean it would get back below the top of that daily profile, and then that would trade into a support zone. And that support zone would start at 48.16. As I mentioned, Amberella has a TD9 count top. So what that does, folks, is that sets up a TD9 count breakout level, and that's the area at 48.16. Above that is the bullish structured profile. And the bullish structured profile is between at the bottom or at at uh, at the low at 48.68, and the center is at 49.47. So the real support zone, the real buy zone, don't have any idea whether price will get back there, Brent. But you could set up triggers: 48.16, 48.68, 49.77, or 49.47. What you would not want to see is price close below 48.16. If it does that, then that tells you we get back to that swing point low from the end of October or the early part of November. The weekly chart here looks pretty nice. It looks to me like there's a confirmed buy the D point pattern. And last week, price closed above the top of its profile. If you get a second consecutive close above it this week, and the it being 5507, that would be bullish and say that it wants to move further. Of course, in order to move further to the upside, it's got to take out that daily TD9 count top. And therefore, that resistance level, should it fail, because this is the other side of that trade, uh, when they do release earnings, Brent, would be a close above 5624. And if price closes above 5624, is trading above it, its price target will likely be 6096. Now, 6096 is a TD9 count breakdown level, but it could also form an A to B equals CD to the upside. But 6096 would be the upside area inside of Amberella and to the downside, 4816, I'd say up to 4947. Right, we're going to a break. I want to at least get that out. Uh, stay with us, if you would. What's the second instrument you want to look at? It's a Marvell, so Marvel. M R V L. Perfect. We'll take a look at that when we come back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're taking an umbrella. AMBA is a ticker symbol. Brent, before I move off of these charts, I know I threw out a mouthful there, so to speak. Any questions about the the numbers or the data or the any for any of the information that I shared with you on the daily time frame chart for umbrella? Not at all, Steve. That was fantastic. That's what I was looking for, and I did Perfect. look. They're both going to be. Uh, uh, Thursday on uh, it's November 30th, last day of the month, and it's after the close. So okay. Be, so, know, of course, Friday would be the day I'd be trading it. Yeah, perfect. So, um, I'll, I'll try, I'll note that on my uh, system out here and try to remember for us to take a look at Ambrell and Marvell come Friday morning out there. We're taking a look at the charts here for Marvell. Now, in the case of Marvell, it also formed a TD9 count top. It actually completed that pattern on November 14th. The high out there that you'd be watching is 57.43. If price were to close by 57.43, that would probably trigger an A to B equals CD to the upside. The price target on the daily time frame around 65 and change out there. There is resistance on the weekly up at 57.61, so you need to be aware of that. Let's say that Marvell pulls back because it's got a TD9 count top. And all price has been doing since that TD9 count top has been trading within the upper range of its profile. What I mean by that is between the center at 53.78 and the top up at the 55.95 uh, level. The key level of support here, Brent, I would say if it could get down there would be 51.61. That would be the bottom of its daily profile out there. Nothing here indicating to us because this TD9 count pattern took place two, four, six, eight days ago, eight trading sessions ago, I should say. Um, and it's just kind of a sideways move out there. On a weekly chart, it's bullish. It has uh, what looks to me like it's got a buy the D point pattern. Um, price above the green oscillator and change line, signaling its intent to go retarget 57.61. The monthly chart is trying to give us an indication that it wants to go target 61.69. We won't, we won't know that for a few days out there. So the areas to be watching as support on the downside for Marvell would be 53.70, would be 54.59, 53.78, and 51.61. And of course, I gave you what needed uh, to happen to negate that TD9 count top. What additional information, Brent, can I assist you with? I think that's it, Steve. I just really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And sure. We will see what happens on Friday. 
Okay, sounds good. Well, we'll take a look at it, and we'll try to we'll try to provide you with some information there. So thanks for the call. Always good to hear from you, and we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Let's go to uh, Nancy's question here, which was really about Microsoft. So we spoke briefly about Microsoft. I'll switch back to take a look at um, the uh, Magnificent Seven for, for John here momentarily. But here we take a look at Microsoft. All that we can see is so far what this has triggered is a road momentum indicator signal today. What that means, Nancy, I know that you're trading this, uh, to scalping, I believe, this to the upside. There is no topping pattern that's in place out here. What is needed to form a TD9 count top today or tomorrow, today first, Microsoft must close above. This is the first thing it must do today. And that is close above 377.44. If Microsoft does not close above that at day's end, then this whole TD9 count structure goes away. What will still remain, though, is the Rhodes indicator signal, and that would require a bearish reversal candle. If you get that, that would identify a top. Same game plan here, same rules, which is price is only supposed to come back and test support, for break support, tells us about a change in trend. In the case of Microsoft, the support right now is at its oscillator and change line. It's trading above that. That is still bullish out there, and that's at 376.90. Other areas of support will be down at 365.16, 366.76, and then up at 374.75, the top of that daily profile. So that's what's going on when we take a look at Microsoft. If we go and switch over to the Magnificent 7, or really just the, simply the top eight holdings within inside of the NDX 100, give me a moment, we'll get back there. I think I still, yeah, I still have those. We've got to change screens here. So give me a moment there. And we'll just run through those pretty quickly, just so I can make sure that I get through. Whoops, dang it. Back. Uh, how about cancel? There we go. Cancel's a better idea. All right, let me change the screen again. You weren't going to get what I was intending, and so I caught myself. What the heck? Now it's taking its sweet old time out there. We don't have that kind of time. Okay, here we got the Magnificent 8, the top eight holdings with inside. We've already covered Apple. We've covered Microsoft. Amazon, no topping pattern in place out here. Wants to continue to move higher. NVIDIA has got a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle. Consolidation with inside its profile. If we take a look at Meta, Meta has a TD9 count top. Price pulled back and tested and rejected its green oscillator and change line so far. That green oscillator and change line is is at 337.10. Therefore, its signal is neutral, even though it's got a TD9 count top. Avgo has a Rhodes momentum indicator top, but price finding support at that green oscillator and change line. That means its signal is neutral. Um, you've got no top pattern in place for Google. That needs to spike above uh, the high from a couple days ago in order to potentially form a TD9 count uh, pattern out there. So what we're looking at here is those that do have tops in place, price is pulled back and tested and rejected support. I don't know what it will do at day zen, John C., Nancy, or anybody inside of the Tigers then, but what I can share with you and narrate for you, what the charts are telling us is 1148, is this is likely just going to be a two to three bar pullback, a normal pullback inside of a bullish move out there. If we start seeing key levels of support breaking, well, then we've got a different thing to look at out there. One key level of support that certainly we can be watching inside of the NQ out there would be its perigee pivot point. If we go ahead and switch panels, go over to the black background screens, well, you'll see out here today, earlier this morning, as price pulled back two different times and tested that perigee. Perigee is when the moon is closest to Earth during the current, current lunar cycle. I believe that took place last Wednesday, I can't remember the exact day right now, but 15,981 is the key level to be watching. In the case of the ES Mini, price is not even pulled back to test its perigee pivot point. In 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 a summary, in short term analysis, as long as price is above that, other than finding and identifying a topping pattern, let's say on a 30 minute time frame chart, that is a bullish signal out there. We're trading above profile when it comes to the NQ, we're trading above profile when it comes to the ES Mini out there. Gold, the area to be watching on gold is at 2,110. That's its perigee pivot point. Silver's way down at 2382. Light speed crude on a rally could find resistance at 7784. And the US dollar index is trading below its perigee pivot point at 103.48. That's suggesting to you and I that we may see US dollar index that continues to move lower out there. So, Nancy, I hope that that helped answer your question with regard to Microsoft. Uh, I hope that helped you answer your question, uh, John, with regard to the Magnificent Seven out there. Let's get to Peter's question. And Peter's question was about the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. So we take a look at that, Peter. What we can see here, if you take a look at the screen, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see a series of higher 
closes out here. Price moving higher in the face. When you take a look at the second panel out here, that's the advanced client oscillator of price actually making lower highs. That is an indication of a top, of a potential top that's out there. These kinds of tops don't get much in the way of traction unless we see that spot volatilities below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's the very bottom panel of the screen. The very bottom panel of the screen shows that the 50 days at 1567, the spot right now at 1274. So that says any trade or movement to the downside is somewhat muted out there. Doesn't mean that we don't have a top. And in fact, Peter, when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, I'm gonna pull this chart over here right now. I'll put it back. You're going to see that today is going to complete a TD9 count top. We would expect or should expect that the New York Stock Exchange will pull back and test that 15,731-ish type area out there. So I believe the top of the New York Stock Exchange is setting itself as we speak right now. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, folks. we got the chart for uh, Boeing up on my screen out here. And I've got the 30-minute time frame chart. I believe, Dan, uh, you took a short position inside of uh, Boeing. If so, the key number for you to watch. And so this is a 30-minute time frame chart. That's why we're focused on it. All those red horizontal lines are TD9 count breakout levels for the 30-minute time frame. What we can see here is if we go back into the October 26th time frame. We have not seen a close below. We've seen a test of a uh, breakout level out here. That was back at about 1230, back on November the 8th. We have not seen a close below a TD9 count breakout level. Now, take us to where we're at at 11.54 in the morning. We are testing at 217.70 level with bar number eight. 
That says a TD9 count pattern should form on a 30-minute basis between 12 noon and 1 p.m. today. So even if we get a close below 217.70, I'd still want to see whether this TD9 count pattern forms, and if so, what price does. On the other hand, this level here, 217.70, may in fact hold. So price is back at a key level of support when you take a look at that 30-minute time frame. Now, on a daily time frame, and the reason why that's so important is because there is a TD9 count top. That completed on Friday, and that suggests that Boeing should pull back to the 21047 level. So your clue on that is going to end up being closing below that 30-minute breakout area, Dan, and somehow negating a TD9 count bottom should it in fact form. I don't have a guarantee it's only bar number 8 at 12 noon, so I don't have a guarantee that at 1230 you'll get bar number 9. But you know how to calculate that pattern, and if you do, then you know what to be watching for there. And then, of course, if that TD9 count pattern fails, that tells you that you're on the right side of the trade and price heads back to that daily oscillator and change line. Nicholas wanted to take a look at SoFi out here. SoFi right now is trading with inside its bullish structured daily profile and if SoFi can close the day above uh, 704 and does the same thing tomorrow it would be signaling to us Nicholas its intent to at least go test the prior swing high that's up at 753 but maybe get up to its profile resistance level that's at eight dollars and twelve cents out there what else can we see with regard to uh, SoFi not much Last thing that I'll do is I'll share with you Goldilocks. You want to be careful with regard to gold. And let me see if I can get there to show us the reasons why right here. I'll put it out there real quick. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. I can't do that. Well, we'll get to that tomorrow for sure. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Have a magnificent Monday. I'll be back at 315 with Tom. Take care. We'll see you soon.